This is Ivic Wolf from the First Severance Podcast and Furry.fm on a Womacon. If you like my voice, feel free to tune in tomorrow for a group discussion on furry conferences and the new virtual con craze. Sorry about oh. that. Now we actually have the right right thing up. Okay. Hi. Hi. We're properly yes? Yes, we are live. All the yes. Okay. Welcome to the First Severance and Furry.fm um, podcast slash everything that we tend to try do all the time. Tonight, we're at Awomacon, uh, and our list of people and guests for this evening would then, of course, be Kali, Tempest, myself, Scratch, Sudan um, uh, as our team. And then, of course, we'll also have Rose and Kit as our two special guests from Awomacon. We'll also be talking about uh, online conventions, what can and will go wrong, charities, why do we have them, and so much more. Hope you guys enjoy the uh, podcast that we have for you lined up for this evening. And yeah, I don't actually know what else to really talk about currently, but let's go for it. <laughs> uh, Sudan, hi. <laughs> I just want to say hi. Yes. If, okay. anything, if anything can go wrong, it will. So... The fact that Awomakan has been running so smoothly for the past day and a half is really amazing and miraculous. I'm sure there are lots of things happening behind the scenes that we'll hear about probably. Very much so, yeah. And yeah, I mean, like a large amount of the stuff that we're going to be talking about is just the, the, the basics of getting this up and running. Um, from our side, uh, specifically, I mean, uh, myself, Sudan, um, and Tempest have all been working on the South African uh, sort of live furry convention. And um, yeah, it's, it's been stuff like that. Beyond that, we'll be looking at online convention. Uh, yeah, not online conventions, but we'll be looking at all of the other things that may and can go wrong. Beyond that, of course, if you have any questions, anything that you'd like to speak about, we're more than willing to just listen to whatever you've got to talk about and we can actually try to answer you uh, as, as best as we possibly can. Um, I know that if I'm not mistaken, we're sort of following up on what was it? Another uh, talk that came before us, just before us, or just two before us. Kit. Um, yeah, I think yeah. you're talking about the uh, attending an IRL convention with me, Rand. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, uh, generally, the the differentiation between an IRL convention versus an online convention. I mean, it, it so much changes. So much is very, very different. And like when it comes to being in there as a guest or anything like that, does anybody here have uh, any other experience beyond just a Womacon, for instance, where they saw things that may not may have gone wrong and could go right? You're more than welcome to have the floor. You know I'm chatty, so yeah, <laughs> I being being involved in both a real life con and a virtual con, I can tell you now that they have different problems. So you're in real life con, you have problems like, I don't know, feeding people, housing people, um, you know, making sure that nobody gets hurt, things like that. Whereas with your virtual con, it's the small niggly details that you never think about. Like, I don't know, your internet dying on the morning of the con, and there being a scramble to get it reinstated. And it's not something that you can prepare for as you could with an in real life con. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, like, and beyond that, of course, like guesting at say, or for that matter, even guest of honoring at a live convention versus guest of honoring at, you know, an online convention, like granted, yes, you could get, you know, practically any guest you ever wanted uh, because they don't have to travel anywhere. But the thing is, is that it's, it's generally about trying to meet people as, as, as much as you possibly can, being there, being present. And I know that what's it like the, um, if, I'm if I'm not mistaken, like other live conventions, for instance, have like a specific guest dinner. So people who are, you know, top tier donators and whatnot tend to go to these little special areas where you have breakfast with the guests of honor and whatnot. Those are the kinds of things that you get perk wise. So it's very difficult to then match that particular perk with a perk 
in an online convention? Like, what is what is the perk for being on an online convention? Um, any, yeah. We actually did have an option like that that uh, Tempo had actually suggested to us, and no one took us up on it. But um, the option was there, and that was to have a virtual pizza party with the guest of honor. I love that idea. I thought it would actually be a completely feasible idea, given, especially now with everything going on, online delivery has really sharpened up. So you could yeah. have a pizza party in your living room with the guest of honor and all the other sponsors. So that was actually such a good idea. And I was so jealous that we didn't think about it as well. Yeah, no, I... <laughs> It, it, it would, would have been fun to see someone take advantage of that, um, sure. but I'm not too disappointed, I suppose, in that it. we would have also then had to figure out the logistics, of course. <laughs> or, or if there's pizza. anything, yes, is there, if there's anything Ivy can tell you, it is to aim high and worry about logistics afterwards. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> For sure. Um, so, one... Yeah? One thing that kind of sticks out to me, and I say this with only the experience of having been behind in the the sausage making of this virtual con, but it seems to me that one difference between a virtual con and a real con is that in a real con, if something goes wrong during a panel, um, that's fine. You know, we've all been... Well, those of us who've been to really large conventions like um, Anthrocon or Midwest Fur Fest, there's just panels that you go to that are just low energy and people aren't super prepared and people show up late and leave early and it's all whatever. It doesn't take away from the con experience at all that not every single panel knocks out of the ballpark. Um, but at least <laughs> when I have uh, caused a couple technical hiccups during a WOMACon, there's no other panel to go to, and it feels a little bit more exposed, and there's more pressure to get it fixed right away. But on the other hand, that's the worst I have to deal with. I don't have to worry about something like someone needing to run some of the ambulance, or needing to get the police involved in something if something goes really wrong. Yeah. I mean, like, that's technically some of the things that have gone wrong at our live convention as well. And that's the weird thing for me is, is that you have to differentiate now between a live convention and an online convention. And it's, it's, it's just so different the way that you sort of handle things. Like it's, it's like, I still feel the exact same amount of anxiety in an online convention as I would at a, at a I'm there live convention, but at if I'm there live in a live convention, I can still run away. You know, I, I have no, the option. You're not to supposed escape. to say that. <laughs> That's supposed to be the secret. You know the you know the inside inside talk, backroom talk. But that's what we're trying to do here. We're talking about backroom talk. The thing is, is that at a live convention, I can run away. Like, oh goodness, there is a gap. I'm going to the lunch hall to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> oh Indeed. dear. I've never done that. Hey? Have you done that? Never. Oh? But you, you handled sure? it so proficiently, to be honest. Like, even with last year's con, you still nail it. Regardless. Yeah, for sure. Even still now, you do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. South Africa it's... last year was outstanding. I would love to have you all back. We, we would love back. to be back. We plan to come back. <laughs> Glad for that. As soon but as feasible. The, I think, again, maybe, maybe the advantage that I currently have is the fact that now, for instance, um, with the way that things are going, with I've done probably around about at least a good 45 to 60 hours um, of nothing but like online classes. Like an hour each, all the time, talking about whatever the hell it is that we're doing. Three hundred, like say, about I've got about six different classes that I've got to teach in in a week, um, either running between two to three hours, dependent on the on the on the students that are coming in. So I think that that definitely comes in as uh, as an advantage because 
there's a particular voice that you use doing a particular thing. It's and like a large amount of the time, especially now with um, what's the word doing the podcast um, as well. Like there's a very particular voice that I use and a very particular way to handle things. And it doesn't matter how scared I am. I am honestly like I'm looking at my hand right now and it is shaking. <laughs> you have no idea. Oh but, my gosh. I, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed. You sound great. But, He's very good at hiding pain. <laughs> and maybe and that is something. Some, yeah, go. Yeah, that's definitely something that we've, that's a very big positive in terms of doing online cons and that sort of thing. And I've also noticed in terms of panelists, there's a lot more people that wants to do a panel on an online con versus wanting to do one in the IRL sort of panels. Because on our, online, when you can sort of mask all of those insecurities quite a bit more, and if you're scared of talking to people in public and that sort of thing, you're not as scared doing it on a, in front of a webcam or doing it streaming or something like that. And you have a level of prep, right? That's yeah. true. You can be in complete control of the environment, and you can even rehearse in the environments you will be presenting from. And also, you and can do a complete pre-recorded session. So you basically, you can edit it until it's perfect to your taste and then present it. So it's like very... Well, if you, you're an anxious person, you can work on it little by little and in the end have a very good product. Yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, we have had people submit a couple of uh, pre-recorded panels and uh, they're really well edited, like you said. So there is that option to, to prepare completely for an online con. So, I mean, and like differences here again, like when we're talking about the idea of cons virtual versus, you know, other things, when it comes to like the kind of attendees that we have, and you guys have had, you know, a huge, wonderful list of guests that have been there. Um, like how, how does it work for you setting that up? Um, so I, I'm not sure if I quite understood the question. Is it, um, setting up who yeah. we're going to have, like, yes, um, just so in, on the one, I think they're yeah, talking on the about one, we did. Do you want me to talk yeah, about panels? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, Trace organized a, a panel submission form and we just put it up on their website, let people know about it, and let anyone who wanted to uh, submit a panel. And then, as we got closer to the con and started working on the schedule, we looked at that list. Um, we considered which panels would be both feasible and enjoyable for an online con. Um, pick those ones out, and by the time we'd picked them out, we had already had enough content to fill up the entire con. Um, there were a handful of panels that we would have enjoyed being able to do, but either required too much prep or just wouldn't have been good for an online format. So unfortunately, we had to let those ones go. Um, oh. But yeah, we just... Several people submitted some really cool ideas, and we were fortunate enough to be able to pick and choose from the people who volunteered. So in, in respect to the ones that you had to let go, what exactly doesn't necessarily work on an online convention then? Um, well, one of the panels that would have been really cool to do, but just would have been very difficult to set up, was... Um, the suggestion was doing essentially like a fursuit dance competition. Um, yeah, which would be really cool to see. It would just require so much prep work, though, in terms of you have to organize who all of these, um, you know, who all is submitting. Do we actually have enough people who have fursuits and, you know, enjoy dancing to be able to do something like this and then we'd also have to figure out okay here are we getting to judge this and i think unfortunately for acon that's as small as ours is something like that just isn't super feasible whereas maybe um if mff was to do a virtual convention it, you know i'm sure they could do something like that more easily 
Uh, I know what you mean, yeah, because we, sorry, sorry, Tempest. Um, the other online cons that I've seen thus far where there have been a fursuit dancing competitions, it's either kind of like a very limited number of participants or sort of disappointing because you kind of like have to pad out the panel with maybe, you know, um, filler material for, for lack of a better word, because they isn't enough interest there isn't enough people who dance and fursuit so you have to cut your losses at some stage and just decide no that's not going to work it's not going to be entertaining yeah, yeah and then sorry oh go ahead and, and it, and with perseverance we also wanted to do something very similar we wanted to have a first dance party and another question that raised up or that we figured out is not a lot of people actually have the video equipment to record themselves or webcams that's good enough to make something like that actually work. So there's a technology barrier that you don't normally have at the IRL con as well on top of everything else. Oh yeah, no, yeah, it's, for sure. it's very much a feasibility issue um, because, yeah, I mean, it requires, you need X number of people who have fursuits and are interested in dancing and then, On yeah, you need that. people who n know what entails good dancing and would be able to like accurately judge something like that too. And yeah, there's just a lot that goes into something like that. Could always maybe have first suit singing. Yeah, go, yeah, go, 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 go. Yes, maybe as a suggestion, maybe just this is just an idea that popped to my head. Instead of having like. Your, you know, your general fursuit uh, dance competition and picking a winner and all that. Why not have people that has fursuits, if not full and partial, submit videos and then someone does like a compilation of best parts of that dance, like a whole, like, I will say music video, maybe, as a highlight to the convention for our online convention of all these talented people. Yeah, the, I mean, something like that would be really cool to see. It would mostly... Um, just be a matter of you'd still have to find all the people to do the thing. Yep. And then you'd also need to, I, I'm sure, do quite a bit of editing to get you know, the video that you'd need. And even then, I imagine it would probably be a pretty short video. Yeah, like, for sure. I can't see something like that being you know, more than like five minutes long unless you were spending a lot of time on it. Yeah. For sure, I'm thinking the same thing. Which that could be valuable, but you wouldn't use that as a as a full panel. You'd maybe use that as like something you submit to social media to advertise the con, or something in between panels, or part of a panel, or something. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. Um, you actually have to do a lot of promotion and a lot of advertising to get your virtual con out there. Um, we had um, actually a very short run up to Perseverance. So we had kind of like a blitzkrieg um, kind of promotion. So that sort of worked for us. But you guys with the longer run up, uh, how did you do your promotion? Like how did you manage to get people interested and, and hyped for your con? Um, I guess a part of it was just advertising within the groups that we had established here. And then, um, you know, also some of like, you know, we did some advertising within your group. We kind of piggybacked off of that a bit. Um, and then also, you know, um, working on the, just the social media side of things too, and trying to find ways to hype things up there as for much sure. as possible. Huge thanks to Anara for, uh, leading the charge on our social media campaigns. Yes, absolutely. She's done a great job with that. Definitely. One other thing that we did that I thought was really cool, um, Tempo actually suggested that what we do is we reach out to artists and invite them to our con. And then if an artist shows up, then they are likely to go ahead and advertise our con because they're going to be at the con and they want people to see what they're doing. Um, and we tried cold emailing a couple of artists, didn't get much traction there. But when we put up the dealer's den and started advertising the dealer's den, 
Um, it was really cool. I noticed that there were some people who joined the dealer's den, were happy with the experience of being added, then told their friends about the dealer's den, and then those artists also joined the dealer's den. Um, and so I suspect that, I, you know, I, I don't really have any numbers or analytics to prove it, but I suspect that quite a few of our attendees who are here are here because they know and enjoy some of the artists who joined the vendors. And um, when we started gaining traction with more and more vendors showing up to the pan to the convention, uh, they brought some of their audience with them. Nice. Guilty as charged. I I definitely started uh, promoting you guys oh, once yeah. you put your witness list up. I was like, guys, you need to get in on this. There's going to be oh. like an audience for your stuff. Continue. Yeah, thank by, you so by much. the way, thank you so much because I did notice no that. Problem. I mean, you've you've been pushing for our convention really hard. I want you time. to succeed. Yeah, thank we you so much, Sudan. We really do. We we also appreciate all the work that you put into the art for us. Yes. You've done just you've given us a ton of amazing support and we really want to thank you for that. Yeah, you guys are awesome and I want only the best for you. Yes, thank you. We really appreciate that. We really do. And I definitely think that there's a lot of space left over in the VCON space. The more VCONs we can actually have, the better it is for the furries. So for sure. all of us should help each other and should make it so that we can actually succeed. Now, you know, build little micro networks and support each other, you know, through the process. Because the more of us actually work on the VCONs, the better it becomes for everyone. That is one thing I really noticed about the furry fandom, especially with uh, our convention being on the receiving end of this. The furry community really does have this sense of we're in this together and we want to want to support each other and build each other up. Um, you guys have definitely been feeding us a lot with your knowledge and your support and your time and energy. Um, Tempo has done some really incredible things uh, behind the scenes to promote our convention and help us succeed and has always been willing to uh, answer our questions and give us help when we needed it. Um, and, you know, listening to the way Tempo has talked about other experiences he's had at other cons, I really get the impression from him that he's not just doing that with us. He does that for every furry community and every furry event that he goes to. He really wants yeah. them to succeed and is happy to lend his time and energy to them. And that is the vibe I get from the entire furry fandom is that everyone is like that. And it's really great being a part of a community that you know we're not competing with each other we're all trying to succeed together and we're really looking to the future and thinking what do we want it to look like in the future this is true and like if, if we can just sort of move on to a little bit of a different topic here when it comes to attending particular conventions now i mean the differentiation between virtual con versus you know live convention the, the differences are obviously there we've mostly spoken about that but like when it comes to being an attendee at a particular convention, like what were the, what were the, what was the point of going to a convention live versus what's the point of going to a convention online? Uh, what do you aim for when you go to a convention? So this is to all panelists. Anybody who wants to sort of answer this, you can go for it. Well, firstly, VCONs are extremely convenient. You leave nothing to chance. You're just in your house. You're in your PJs. If you want to be in your PJs, it's great. And for people with social anxiety, this might be a good like training field just to find out who's in the community, what kind of community it is. So I think there's space for for both virtual and in real life cons in in any community. Yeah, definitely agree there. Um, anybody else have anything to say about that? I'm sorry, I'm just jumping in. Help me. Uh, we do actually have an audience question as well. So as soon as you're Sweet. done with yes. this one, we can quickly fire that one off. I mean, so it's a two-part. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, go, 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 go. 
Okay, it's a two-part uh, question. It's from Yakum Alam. He asks, do you guys think there's a market for a dedicated online convention tool slash app? What do you guys find missing in YouTube Discord setup? Um, I, I can sort of answer this one from the perseverance side of things. And the reason why we don't go and develop like a specific app to do VCons and that sort of thing is suddenly you have to, everyone has to sort of jump through hoops to gain access to it. So everyone that wants to attend your convention now first has to download a new app, install it. Then the question becomes, do you do it for Android? Do you do it for iOS? How do you get it in the app store? That sort of thing. So you make it a lot more difficult on yourselves. But let's say two years from now, and let's say we sort of started do, doing VCLONs, it's like 20 or 30,000 people attending. It might be a different story, and it might be worthwhile doing something like that. I don't know that's if um, Aromacon can point. jump in on that. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I do think that there's definitely something to be said there with using existing platforms like YouTube, you know, like we're doing. It's um it's very easily accessible you know all you have to do is go hey we're we're doing a convention right now here's the youtube link just click on this and your browser will take you there and i mean so yeah i think i think that is something that defines um virtual conventions from real conventions too is that you know they're very low stakes you can jump into the stream for five minutes and if you really don't what, like what's going on you can leave yeah <laughs> which which sucks do that, for but... organizers but you know <laughs> <laughs> well it's a give and take fun. though because you know like as a womacon we're just starting out we're such a small group we really had no established reputation and yet here we are and we've had roughly 20 to 30 attendees for almost the entire day yesterday and going strong day two um if we were something where people had to commit and pay money to attend and then physically be here and they couldn't leave easily when they wanted to it'd be a lot harder for us to get started and so those those low stakes mean that yeah we don't necessarily get to hold all of our attendees as long as maybe we'd want to but it also means that we get to have lots of attendees who show up because it's it's something worth checking out at least so regarding that i have a very very interesting question um because like what's it um south africa when it started we had what was it like uh, 27 was the initial number and then 28 yeah, yeah. 20 27 and yeah so, so, like, the, the 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 general point for us was always just you know what build it and they will come. That was kind of what we had as a as as our general marker. It didn't matter how many people sort of pitched because again, like our first two venues weren't necessarily the best venues to have. But shut your mouth, they were experiences. Oh yeah, like there's nothing better than a cold shower and then not showering for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> just okay. say everybody can be a musky husky for a short while especially if but everybody <laughs> is a musky husky it sounds like yes, we came it... to uh south africa for a good time <laughs> yeah you did actually. <laughs> yes you did <laughs> those goddamn but... railroad beds oh uh... what <laughs> you yes, missed you out even i am the horror cool. stories of those beds <laughs> from what i understand um, um, and then the like, fact that it didn't seal at all, so it wasn't a small bed, so like this cold air from all sides got into the little cards, but it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and God. beyond that, of Rock course, hard. that one, like, yeah? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, like the, the one shower, for instance, one of the main showers decided to just give up at some point. The day that I wanted to get into it, I was like, oh, well, it's cold, I'm leaving. It was winter. Okay. There's no other reason. <laughs> well, at but least you also didn't have on... like a pipe burst in your cart. No, and everybody on that day went um, like, uh, what is it? Uh, quad, biking quad biking and and like all kinds of things. Oh, so people the quad were biking dirty. Was 
phenomenal win. Oh my uh, god. and me and Yod went quad biking. All that came back is like us just just covered in dust. Like I took my sunglasses off and you just see my pale blue eyes while the rest is covered in red sand. It was amazing. Wow. I would definitely do that again. It was so fun. But, but then again, like when it comes to the personal experience, if those are the things that you walk away with, irrespective of things like, you know, shower issues and, you know, the bed that you were sleeping in was an absolute piece of rock. Any of those, if, if all of those things are the ones that you're willing to sort of let go of because the experience was there then I think that that's a good convention. It's almost kind of the same thing as having a non-convention where you walk away and go, you know what, there was this one panel that I listened to that was great, that absolutely made the rest of my convention. And I think those are the kinds of things that we look for in conventions to begin with. It's the fact that, you know, whatever the experience is, if there is an experience that's positive, that's the kind of experience you should be aiming for. Oh yeah, for sure. So in your in real life uh, cons, you have more spontaneity, more whatever, and that's awesome. You really get to know people. You really sit up late around a bonfire and you talk to people. It's like the spontaneity of an in real life con can't really be transferred to your virtual con, but. Your virtual con, I feel, has more considered content and might be more informative and more interesting to attend from a fandom perspective. Yeah, I think that's something that um, unfortunately is kind of lacking somewhat in the virtual con experience is just being able to hang out with everyone. Because that's always been one of the most fun things about attending a con you know where For sure. um you know if it's a a very personal smaller con like um south africa you know just getting to see all of you and getting to hang out with you all um it was just amazing but then we miss you, know, you come back I, we miss yes. you too <laughs> We, we uh, promise yes. this time we will not let Ivic go to the hospital a day after the con. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. We're just bearing him out in the felt. It'll be great. Uh, Please do. I'd rather die. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Love. Um, and then, yeah. yeah uh, but, with... even, but even with uh, smaller cons like ours, even the bigger cons, you get such a different experience. Oh, for yeah. example, especially like, for example, when I went to MFF last year for yeah. the very first time, my very first international con. It was like, I didn't know what to expect. It was like a over large convention, but the people I met out of the blue blazes, people that I never thought to meet in real life, like Gildix is one of the guys that I've met there. He is a Canadian fur, but former South African that moved to Canada, uh, Canada uh, a few years ago. And out of the blue blazes was, I was just wearing a random South African scarf and he recognized the colors and he just like approached me out of the blazers and like, are you from South Africa? I'm like, yeah, I'm from South Africa. Like, I'm from South Africa too, live in Canada now. And literally like the friendships that I built and made there is like something I, you, you will never, okay. You will definitely have some form of that kind of experience on, on the virtual con, but like that interaction in real life is like something you can't experience with a real with a online con in my honest opinion yeah and then um when you have something like you know mff then you also have the experience of i mean one of my favorite things about mff has always just been wandering around the convention space and seeing like hundreds or even thousands of attendees who are first seating oh and my gosh it's just that that that's the things like in South Africa, because it's such, like the furry fandom is slowly growing in South Africa, but you know, the general population doesn't know about the fandom. Go, like going around uh, in first, for example, just at a normal com uh, comic convention, everybody goes, ooh, oh, you know, what is this? They're so impressed. They want to know so much more. Go to a big convention like that, like MFF. It's like, you don't stand out. You just 
fit right in. It's like you, you, you're not out of place at all. You're not like, you know, you're not center of the attention or anything. You can just mingle and hang out with, with people with the same common interests as you. Yeah. And yeah. even from a non first suitor perspective, you know, it's just kind of magical to be in a big space and see all these cartoon animals wandering around. <laughs> I will say that even at these larger conventions, I, at least in my experience, know we very frequently go up to a fursuiter and say, we really like your fursuit, can we take a picture? Sometimes they'll give us a hug as we leave. And so I think that wearing a fursuit, even at these very large conventions, it's much harder to form a lasting connection with somebody, but you will get attention. And it looks like it's probably pretty fun. <laughs> No, trust me, it is a lot of fun, but it, it really comes from perspective. But especially, you know, what's the one thing about, like, these last conventions, especially when you see all these well-known uh, people from the fandom itself, that you always see on social media and you actually meet them for the first time in real life. It's so unforeal. It's like meeting Gadget and Gizmo for the first time and uh, Jeff and... Uh, Corey Coyote and all those people, you always see them on, you know, on YouTube and, you know, Twitter and all that, but meeting these guys in real life, it's, like, mind-blowing. Yeah, like, it really is. It really is. Um, we do have another couple of questions on YouTube. Yeah, willing to field them. Let's go. Um, so, uh, the follow-up question that uh, Yako Milan had was for one thing I'm wondering how one would do an online artist alley that simulates the real experience so what we have been doing for that to the best of our ability at Awomacon, um we have the vendors list page and I mean this is absolutely unapologetically wholeheartedly tooting my own horn here because I put that page together and I feel pretty proud of it, but it's just- I love it. <laughs> Thank you. There are just so many artists on there and there's so many different art styles represented. We even have things like light up accessories and novels and keychains. Um, I and want, fursuiters I want on those there. light up things. Those light up things have yeah. got me. Ooh, I want <laughs> them. I need but, them. And for me, a huge, a huge part of the magic of walking into a dealer's den is you walk in there and it is this entire room filled wall to wall, whether it's a small convention with a few artists who you can really get to know, like at First Ever and uh, South Africa, for, or an entire convention hall like Denver or MFF. You just walk in there, you see every single mm. space that's available, covered up with some kind of vendor. My words, and just, like... The only thing to do is to just walk through the entire dealer's den and see what's available and start dreaming about the, how you're going to spend your hard-earned cash. That's the thing! It's <laughs> like, you know how tempting that was? All the stuff that they had there. It's like, I want to buy it all. The oh my gosh. The art books, the, the Ducky Morrows, the, the art, the, the figurines, just... I just wish I had more cash with me. It's like exactly like, right. I want it all. Just why? Why can't I just be rich and just buy cool stuff? <laughs> like why? <laughs> but the other, the other cool thing about a dealer's den, uh, an in-person dealer's den, is that he, once you decide what you want, you can then walk up to the dealers and talk with them, and you know they're really excited about their art. They're always really approachable. You can ask them questions. Um, sometimes you can start having a fun little chat with them. Um, that's the thing. It's like you, besides going just for, you know, the awesome marketing, uh, and things they're promoting, the, just getting to know the people behind those things. How, how, how can I put it, like, how they got the inspiration to start this kind of things. It's like a whole different story that you, uh, learn about behind all the things they make. It's like Definitely. how they start, why it's like. So cool. A thing that I also started doing, actually, and I started actually doing it uh, last year at the MFF when I saw um, 
Elder Wolf, aka Bile Guards, what he loves to do, uh, if he doesn't necessarily buy stuff from a dealer's den or the artist gallery, he loves to collect the artist's and the dealer's uh, business cards for future um, commissions and stuff. So he has literally like a whole card deck with all these amazing artists and dealers uh, with their business cards that he collects and follow on social media for, you know, to see what all kinds of things they can promote in the future. Yeah. Um, John. And so to try and replicate that side of the experience at a Womacon, we put together a Dealer's Den channel on our Discord. And so we have, you know, I noticed that, like, um, Edgar Kingmaker in particular has been hosting a lot of art streams throughout the con and inviting con goers to attend those. And so there is this opportunity then for the vendors to interact with the attendees in this uh, virtual space as well. Um, I am, and you know, I haven't really, it's hard to tell because I think a lot of the interactions that are happening with vendors and con goers are likely happening through private messages. Um, I'm on the fence about how successful we've been at replicating that side of the con experience, the chance to really interact with the vendors. Um, the dealer's den has been getting attention, but I was hoping it'd get more attention than it has, to be honest. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure how to fully capture that magic of being able to interact with vendors in Which, a virtual space like this. Good, good time to plug. Please check out our dealer's den. We have some awesome folks in there. Like, it's been really overwhelming. We have 19 separate vendors. Definitely. And all of them are really high quality. You, yes. you should totally check them out, please. <laughs> there are some really, really cool artists, and there aren't any mediocre artists. Yeah, and, and vendors as well. It's not all just art either. Yeah, yeah. There's some really cool stuff. If you have money to spend and you want furry paraphernalia, this is your chance. <laughs> Blow all the money uh, you to spend on physical cons this year. <laughs> <laughs> and what we wanted to do with Perseverance, we also faced the exact same problem. And what we found is there's not enough moderators to you know, cope with that sort of problem. But what we've, we're probably going to try to do with the second VCon we're, we're going to try is to have on Discord one or two channels just open permanently where it's like an artist free-for-all. So any artist can just go into that sort of channel and do a live stream of them doing commissions and just like mm -hmm. improv. And anyone can come past, look at what they're doing, ask questions in the chat, that sort of thing. So it sort of gives you the sort of dealer's day experience that's separate from the main con where everyone can interact and you can see what's going on, but it's it's a bit more virtual. It's a bit more open. That makes we'll sense. see how that works out for the second one. Okay. We'll make it work. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a threat and... because it is. <laughs> <laughs> We really don't utilize Discord for all of its capabilities. And I think for the next one, that's going to be quite a big focus. And having those sort of rooms where it's just everyone can come in and collaborate and get the little sort of dealers then experience in one of the channels where three or four people are streaming art at the same time, that would be amazing. Definitely. Yeah. yeah so, that, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go. Uh, no, I was no, just no, going to no, say, no. that is something I've noticed um, during, this, during this con is that... Um, yeah, Discord has been a really useful tool just in terms of coordinating everything and yeah, just having like separate spaces for different things to happen, but then also everything is contained in the one group. Yeah, fair enough. Um, So I, I do want to change tack here for, I guess, for now. Uh, but yeah, so one of the things that I think often comes up in respect to a large amount of the questions is honestly around the idea of a charity. And I know that with live conventions, having a charity kind of sounds like something that we're going to do anyway. Now that we're online, it, it seems like having a charity almost seems to take precedent over pretty much anything else. We're having a convention online a large amount of the reason as to why people join us online is technically because of the charities that we're supporting. Um, 
And so it, uh, as, as, as sort of this question kind of mentions here is, is that it's pretty much universally a norm that all conventions have a charity that we're going to be paying for. And I think that, uh, as it also, as, as we also mentioned, it's this idea of, you know, a feel good factor, uh, that attendees who may be anxious, uh, about just frivolously spending on things. Now we have a reason to spend money for, and, and not to mention the idea that like, if you look at South Africa, if you look at all of the conventions out there, there's something that we can buy for a raffle or this or that or the other thing. And again, it's that entire idea of not frivolously spending money and throwing it out there and going like, aha, I got all this stuff. Yes. But <laughs> there's, there's something that you're getting back for that, like a feel good factor. So, I mean, if we could talk about how or why we have charities in the first place. I'm gonna, the really idealistic answer, and one that I think is a very, very, very large part of the reason why this is so common in the furry community is, like I was saying earlier, I think the furry community just has this really strong sense of paying it forward. And um, it's become a norm because you know, when the furry fandom was establishing itself, there's this really strong ethos of being kind to each other and accepting each other and helping out where we can. And that's just become very firmly rooted as part of the furry fandom now. And so it just feels very natural to want to give back when you're running this kind of event. And who doesn't want doggos to be happy? Yes. Yes. And kitties. And kitties. And all the things, all the living creatures. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. I feel that like being generous and being charitable or caring at least is a very furry fandom kind of orientated thing. And I love it. I really oh, love definitely, it. Definitely. Um, I also, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and say this. It's a little bit of a hot take. Um, Trace and I have attended a local anime convention for years and it is a it's a pretty good experience um but they don't have a charity and they're still a very successful convention even though they don't run a charity with it so i think this thing that is just taken for granted in the furry community is not something that's part of all fandoms so we really do those, have something special with the, with the way we treat charities weebs <laughs> it's, it's not like that I mean you're not oh, obligated to run a charity but I do think we can feel good about ourselves yeah no definitely but yeah it's it's so common and like you say we we don't even consider having an event without having a charity that we could possibly uh, collect some donation for so wow go us Yes. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I think it's generally about this idea of, you know, like it's it, it is weird and I think somebody actually mentioned this at some point, like the reason why we have conventions and have uh, a charity with that is so that we can feel less guilty about going to a convention in the first place. Like, why am I even here? Is pretty much half of the question that you're asking. And then you kind of sit there going like, I feel better because I've actually used this amount of money to help those puppies. Yay. I do remember yeah. hearing one story from a furry. I forget who it was, but some older furry was talking about his experiences at a panel I attended in the past. And he said how he worked in this really, really conservative state with some really, really conservative co-workers. And, you know, they just didn't need to know he was a furry. It was fine. But then somehow word of him uh, dressing up in a fursuit and helping out with one of these conventions came out. And when one of his co-workers came up, the co-worker said, Hey, I heard that you were helping with this charity event. I don't really understand what you were doing, but I think it's really cool that you're trying to help out. And so I think that, you know, one one thing that we do get out of running charities, to be honest, is that, you know, it we get a better reputation out of it. Uh, considering our reputation at the moment, like, we need all the good press we can get. <laughs> but, that, but don't you also feel like, especially the first sitting axi uh, like aspect of it, uh, it makes... Um, it more, I don't know, 
uh, acceptable for people or uh, approachable for the general public to find out about furries and then find out, well, we're just people uh, having a hobby and enjoying helping others. I'm going to have another really hot take about this. Um, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> this is a really hot take. Um, Hashtag so, hot take. <laughs> like I've been saying, I really think that a big part of the furry fandom is that we really value being kind and we really value being accepting. And I think that in the current cultural climate, there are a lot of people who strongly value conformity and this really traditional idea of what morality looks like, well, well above being accepting and kind-hearted. And when furries were first starting to be recognized in this cultural environment, we valued kindness and acceptance, which not everyone else really cared about, but we were real different. <laughs> and we weren't playing by those rules of conforming or by being moral in this really traditional kind of Victorian sense. And so, of course, we got looked down on. And I, I think it's just... The hot take is that the furry fandom has a better moral compass than a lot of the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I still, I, I still fail to see where your hot take is. I agree with that sentiment. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Hashtag popular opinion. <laughs> I mean, you you get all of these people together. It's it's kind of it's it's actually insane if you actually have to think about it. You just got a whole bunch of people from um, America, from Australia, from Brazil, from anywhere to just randomly talk to one another, be in one particular place. And maybe that's one of the things that does very well for online conventions is the idea that you don't have to pay a large amount of money to be in a place with people that you can feel a bit more at home with. And it's something that I've seen quite often with, you know, a Womacon. Uh, is it's that entire idea that, you know, we're a group of what, South Africans, Americans, um, Canadians, goodness knows, we all sort of just got together randomly into one particular area and went, okay, what are we doing? <laughs> same thing happened Let's with Chris Averin. You guys accomplished the same thing. Yeah. Uh, go. Um, uh, yeah, and speaking of, we've actually got a question something on those lines. So, Jakob Milan asks, oh, my God, did registrations. Perseverance did not. Do you think registrations work, improve attendance? Also, should one charge for registration for a virtual con? I just want to say really fast, thank you so much for these really excellent questions, Yoko Malan. We really appreciate them. He's really good at questions. Yes. Clearly. <laughs> um, he, questions. He's a deep thinker. He is an author, so... <laughs> That'll do it. But yeah, go. Um, um, go ahead. Did you have something? I think you can go first with the um, oh, I'm on one, and I'll reply with the first appearance one. Sure, yeah. Um, so I think registrations for us, um, were mostly just a convenient way to like try to get an idea of the kind of numbers that we'd be having, you know, it's like. You know, there's a difference between someone saying, oh, yeah, that sounds cool, and then just forgetting about it versus, okay, I'm committed to this enough that I'm going to, you know, send you my name and some information so you can keep track of me. Um, you know, there's just a bit of a difference in commitment there where, you know, the latter, you can more easily depend on yeah, this person is probably going to have some vested interest in seeing the convention. You know, they're not just going to face on it. Um, and, you know, from our side, it means that we can remind the attendees, you know, that, hey, don't forget about the thing. And, um, and also, you know, 
the way that we did registration was we had the free registration for just whoever wanted to join, you know, exactly for that reason. But then we also did the paid registration, which is both, you know, just as a, hey, if you want to support the convention directly, you can do so with this. But then also, um, if you would like to get some cool stuff out of it, we have that option too. And um, that was another thing that Tempo was really good at helping us figure out. It's just like, yeah, you guys should totally do some merch and hear some ideas. And yeah, it was just really cool to see how that worked out. Because I know that, you know, you didn't do too much in the way of merch and I can definitely understand why there's just a lot that goes into that but but yeah it was just really cool to be able to have that ambition and go okay we're gonna figure out how to do some merch um speaking of our merch is still available <laughs> yep we haven't been advertising it as hard but if you go to our website we do have a merchandise page and we have face masks posters badges and stickers for sale yeah. Oh my god, those face masks are so freaking adorable. They are hey, so Fox adorable. Did a great job on them. And you did, correct me if I'm wrong, you did the convention badges and the, some of the stickers, right, Sudan? Um, I think I did the convention badge yes, okay. front, the and, front and back. Badge. Yep. Yep. Those badges look nice. They really do. Yes! Hi, Fiverr. Yep, I think that the image we've occasionally been using as our background during the convention, this one right here is actually the one side of the con badge. Yep. Only occasionally. That's the only thing I've been seeing. Thanks, guys. I really <laughs> appreciate the, the free uh, like ad advertisement there. So Dan's art is amazing. You should all definitely con uh, commission her if you're thinking um, about commissioning her. Speaking of Sudan's art, this, this is also Sudan's art. This splash screen right here. Yes. God damn it! What did I? What did I do for you guys? It's like. Uh, well, you everything. did like half of the convention's art, and you also <laughs> really did a lot of groundwork to advertise us in South Africa. For. So, but guys, geez. I needed I needed to show up or shut up because you already had such good artists on board. So mm. I really needed to bring my A game. And you did. You really did. <laughs> and meet Alex the nerd. Yeah, huge shout out to all Gosh. of our artists because yeah, Alex and Fox Rush have been amazing as well. They definitely have been. Yeah, and from the perseverance side, um, I just want to say that the way you guys are doing it, I think is the right way to do it. Have different packages to see what sort of engagement people want, what people want out of the con, and some physical things that people can actually remember from the con. Um, we initially also wanted to do like a, a sort of a physical merch sort of thing uh, going forward, but uh, there was just no time. We were under such a deadline time-wise. There is still so much available from Sudan, though, if I remember. Yeah, but not stickers. not only that. At the time of um, perseverance, we had a complete lockdown on our uh, postal service, so there would have been no way to get the merch actually to our supporters in time or oh, no. in a timely fashion. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> we, so we that was the that was the big up. consideration. Yeah, we were really big lockdown, so we had no way to distribute our merch. But I think uh, having like, like a sort of tier package is, is what you should have, and that then goes into the second question: uh, Should one charge for registration for virtual cons? And I, I don't think so. I, I think I like agree. the basic tier should be open to everyone. It should be accessible. People should be able to to join in. I wholeheartedly agree. Mm -hmm, definitely. I mean, like a, a physical con, um, having another person show up does cost you more money because you have to pay more for space for them to stay. You have to, that's, you know, you're getting closer to the maximum capacity of your convention center. You then have to go and organize your con for a larger audience. Um, it costs absolutely nothing for someone else to join our YouTube stream. So uh, the way people actually join and contribute is, is a bit different in a virtual con space. 
So even people that couldn't pay for a registration, they, they'll go and donate during the streams or support one of the artists or, you know, use that, that money to put it back another way into the actual virtual con experience. So it, it's not a question of uh, people don't pay uh, at all. You, know, you, you still get your donations. You still get people supporting the artists. So it's a win-win situation if you have a free tier. Even if people don't spend any money at all, they still, you know, that gives our panelists a larger audience, that's more activity in our chat channels, and, you know, just someone else attending the con makes the whole experience more worth our time as well. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, engagement is also worth so much. Just being here watching and posting all of the cool questions and being in a chat, you know. Um, so with, with that sort of like, we, we'd, we'd kind of like to hear what your organizer perspective would be. Um, so how is a Womacon going, um, behind the scenes and how does it appear or how does it compare to the experiences that we obviously on our side as observers, uh, share, was it easy to find volunteers, for instance, how was the uh, response from the public, uh, did deadlines just whoosh past? I think you honestly probably have more to say about that than I do, Trace. Um, I mean, as for the stream itself, I think it's gone really well. We've had, you know, just a couple of technical hiccups, but other than that, you know, we've had all of our panelists show up, and I think everything's gone pretty smoothly. I, yeah, I don't think there's been much on that end. Um, I guess if anything. You know, it's been hard to um, arrange the, um, I I would have liked us to have a, a bit more focus on the VR chat side of things, um, just to having more people involved. And I feel like things have been a little chaotic there, on that side, um, which I would like to apologize to everyone about, um, but, yeah, unfortunately, it's just been harder to figure that out because we haven't had a dedicated, um, you know, this is our team member who is running VR chat. We've had to try to find volunteers from the community to try to help head things in that direction. I mean, yeah, and, and that's yeah. Sorry, go. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Like you, you seem to continue. Go, uh, go. I was. I was just going to say, and yeah, just from our side of things, we have limited equipment in terms of, you know, like we have, we have a VR headset here, but mm. the computer that we would use to do something like VR chat is exactly what we're using to run the stream. <laughs> yeah. fair, so. fair enough. And I mean, with, with that as a, sorry, uh, with, with that as a, a, as, as a general sort of backgrounding and especially within the VR, uh, arena, like, I mean, I've, it, it seems to sometimes be a little hit and miss currently. What do you think? And granted you're in the middle of this, but what do you think we would be able to do better in the next it, iterations of an online convention? Because I mean, there's there's this entire thing. I mean, from our side, for instance, we had this 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 issue of, I guess, it's if if you're looking at VR chat, you're looking at this idea of interactions completely, but then you're also not able to control the people that you're interacting with. You're going to get a whole bunch of people just swearing at you, and it it makes things like this to be kind of difficult. Like, how would we be able to interact with that in a different way? Yeah, I think. Um... I mean, the way that we tried going about this was somewhat separating um, the VR chat side of things from the con side of things. And I feel like we may have done that a bit too much. Um, you yeah, know, we still have had some VR panels. And I, I want to say a huge thank you to Mirren for all of it he's done to help us out with the VR side of things. He's been amazingly helpful. Um, but we didn't really have, um, I know that you, for Perseverance, had a panel that was like showing off live, you know, this is what's going on in VR chat. You should come join us. You know, we didn't have 
anything quite like that. Probably the closest thing would be Mirren's intro to VR. So like, this is what VR is like, and here's a tutorial about how to get started. And, I mean, to be... Sorry, yeah? Okay. Uh, I think, again, it just comes down to we didn't quite have, you know, the manpower that um, we needed to be able to go, you know, this is our official... You know, these are official VR chat runners, and, you know, here's everything going on in that side of things been a little more chaotic and yeah again huge thank you to Mirren because things would be even more so if not for all of his efforts so I mean we're, we're definitely going to uh, for, for everybody who's going to be doing any vcons from here on out you're going to need a moderator to be able to work through this kind of stuff and I mean not just one moderator but like several uh, do you think that that would be a better way to be able to deal with things, or how how would you want to, how would you deal with it now, knowing the stuff that you know? Um, yeah, I think absolutely. Just having having moderators and more of a structure in terms of okay, this person is going to be here at this time, you know, like just figuring out the logistics more of okay, who's hosting the world instance and. Um, you know, who's going to be around when, say, the moderator running things needs to use the bathroom and they've been, you know, straight, been doing VR stuff for eight hours. <laughs> and just, yeah, I think I, it, it, it's just been difficult to find people to work on that side of things. Um, and I, I kind of wish that we had just a bit more time to find people to be able to focus on that bit a bit more. I just want yeah. to huh? say just from what I watched from your thing, Mirren's panel was actually amazing. It was like oh, a perfect no, introduction oh, to it. For sure. He did a absolutely fantastic job with that. And uh, yeah, uh, VR is extremely, extremely, extremely difficult. So um, it, it's going to be a, a bit of a challenge to tackle that to make it work for everyone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, man, I, I certainly have no fault with how Mirren has handled things. He's done, a, he's gone above and beyond, especially considering he really isn't affiliated with our group in any other way other than he really likes virtual conventions and thought it would be cool to help us out with this one. And so we really appreciate all that he's done. For sure. I I think it's more on our side of things. I wish we had like a dedicated, this is the person who's in charge of VR chat. You know, from like on our um, convention organizing team where I feel like we haven't quite had that. That's that's pretty fair. So, like, uh, I know that we kind of already slightly touched on this beforehand, but uh, at least IRL versus virtual cons. But, I mean, given your experience both uh, nationally as well as internationally, what sets conventions apart from one another? What makes a convention make you want to come back? Um, I think it's... It's really any combination of things. Um, is, you know, I think of, you know, South Africa is a very different experience from MFF, but I would, you know, love to go back to both of them for different reasons. You Definitely. Know. Like MFF, I can't really say that I've, you know, made a ton of awesome friends just from going, um, just because it's so huge and overwhelming and there's so many people, you know, it's hard to, for me, at least, it's been hard to, you know, meet new people and, you know, really see, you know, make new friends that way. But but at the same time, you know, because it's so large and there's so much influence, you get to do really cool things like meet creators that you've respected for years and, you know, like you really enjoy their art and their content and things like that. And you get to meet them in person and... You know, just get to talk with them and interact with them and you know things like that are really cool and then again yeah you know, definitely just 
being in convention spaces with thousands of fur suits and <laughs> like things like that are just really amazing. So I I think there really is just different things to different conventions. Yeah. Um, I will say we managed to steal one of the things that I've really enjoyed about MFF in the past for Oomicon, and that is Tempo, <laughs> because his panels are consistently just a ton of fun to listen to. He is so high energy, and he has some really fun ideas. It is just so much fun to hear him go, and I... I've been really happy to have him as the guest of honor. I mean, even in that, he's gone above and beyond in our expectations and helping us out and drawing suggestions our way. And, you know, here you could do this. And it's been incredible. So thank you so much to Tempo. I remember the last time we went to MFF, uh, Trace politely informed me that we were going to go to every single panel with Tempo. And that's what happened. And it wasn't, it was absolutely not the kind of thing where she was like, you know, tying a chain around my neck and yanking me around. It was just, this was going to be a high priority for us, and it was absolutely worth prioritizing. And that's kind of exactly how it would go, is, is that, like, one of the reasons why we go to conventions in the first place is because I think a large amount of the time we just hear about them somewhere. Like for me, going to Camp Feral is going to be the highlight of my life. It wouldn't necessarily be, you know, it's it's not going to be going to the biggest convention in Northern America or anything like that. Camp Feral for me, not necessarily just because of the experience that would happen because of it, but just because of the vibe that I get from that, and the very fact of the matter is, is that when we look at, at, at um, South Africa, like the very main reason as to what we modeled our convention on was exactly that. And I need to be there to be able to understand what I can do to make sure that, you know, South Africa gets better. Like I need to go to a convention like that to be able to see what I might be doing wrong um, and what, what we could just improve on and that's something that that i find just that's where i want to be at some point like that's like that would be my highlight like after that i would literally just boom <laughs> for the record <laughs> south african is amazing and everyone who has not been to south africa should go there just for that <laughs> yes again you know i think that MFF, you get to go there and you get to see the vendors you want to see and you get to go to the panels you want to go to because there's so much that they will have exactly what you want. But while I have met people at MFF, I think I've only ever like made one actual new friend after years of going to MFF. And I went to South Africa and... I mean, Trace can tell you I am notoriously bad at names and meeting new people. Um, I like meeting new people, but I'm really bad at remembering who they are. But by the time I left South Africa, I knew like at least half of the convention. And there was this opportunity to actually get to know people that just is impossible in the enormous rush of a, of a con with thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, definitely. But you do come across those people from time to time. Even during my time at the MFF, I came across multiple of the people that I've encountered on the first day throughout uh, the con by just sheer luck, I would say. Because like you say, it was what, what over the 11,000 attendees last year? Something absurd Yeah, like that, that might have been. Yeah, something in that line, uh, yeah. And you barely get time to actually mingle with all those people. But then, it's again, with all the panels they had, like the one that I actually really enjoyed going to was the, uh, what was it called? Like the speed chat thing where you had like just a few minutes to chat and to, you know, get to know people out of all the blue lasers. It was actually quite a different experience and fun. I just want to mention that Kit felt so welcome and 
included at South Africa that he took over the music at the rave that we had. <laughs> That's right. I'm still like... really happy you guys let me do that. <laughs> and he enjoyed himself. I, I don't know. It, yes, I did. Your tunes were amazing. Oh, gosh. And everybody danced. And they, there were only 20 people on the dance floor, but we danced our hearts out. It was great. Thank you. That was great. Come that back. Was fun. Yes. I don't think you understand. Come back. We haven't come back, not because we don't want to, but because the opportunity has not freaking presented itself. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Oof. Oof. I yeah, like and you know what? Just the 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 kind of energy that this kind of info or like this these kinds of little sharing uh, points sort of brings forward. The kind of you know that you you hear a person is going like I'm gushing at this point. That's exactly the kind of response that we. Anybody who's running a con, doesn't matter if it's online or if it's live, that that kind of, I was here. Did you see this? Did you see that? Did you do these particular things? That kind of response, that kind of energy that comes from that, that is like, <clears throat> for me, like I die because it exists. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's the best kind of adrenaline rush that I've ever had ever. Yes. Yes. Yep. Because let's face it, you are putting in all this effort, all this time, all this worry for people to come and enjoy themselves. And when people actually tell you, and it's a small thing, like I had such a good time, it's all worth it. Everything, a single sleepless night, every single worry is all worth it if somebody enjoyed what you put together. Yeah, definitely. Oh, absolutely. I speaking of, I really hope that everyone who has attended has been enjoying the convention. Because I mean, uh, among other things, you know, like the charity, this this is really for you all, and I really hope that you've gotten something out of it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, we can also chat. I mean, we've got a live chat. Have you guys been? Archer saying it's been fun. Oh, thank you, Archer. Jake mentioning, um, oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> it has been fun from Archer. Uh, and honestly, like, I mean, from what I've been able to just sort of sit in and, and listen to and things like that, holy crap, there have been some amazing topics. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> great stuff, honestly. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, don't think we've had a bad panel this whole time. It's it, it's all been very high quality. I've been very impressed with everyone who's been a panelist. Thank you all so much to everyone oh, who has sure. done a panel. Definitely. As someone Yaku, that's watched a few yeah. of them, it's been absolutely fantastic, your panel so far. I mean, some really exciting stuff and other things that I'm taking back with me, like, like the con about how to promote and independently publish. You know, I'm going to go with that to my boss and I'm going to go, you, you want mentioned that you wanted to do this HIV care book. You know, I've got the answer. Awesome. I hope yeah. that helped you out. Yeah, Rafferty definitely showed up with a really strong panel to kick us off. Mm. That was an outstanding panel. Um, looks like we have another question from Yako. Well, before you say that, I just want to mention we have probably about another five minutes, seven or eight minutes if we really want to squeeze it before the next panel needs to start getting underway. Well, before we need to start setting yeah, up before the you next start panel. Setting up so for yeah, it. we do need to wrap up soon. Um, question was, which IRL conventions do folks from Cowboy Country generally attend? Not talking about long haul flights, local cons. Um, <laughs> I'm presuming you're referring to us as Cowboy Country. I. I guess that might kind of be right. It's it's much more farm Yeehaw! country. <laughs> yeah, it's more farm country. And I guess if you get so out we... west, there is some ranch land as well. Um, I... So the conventions that we've been to, at least, have been um, 
as far as like local local conventions we've had the an anime convention that we've been to. We yep. ha- we don't actually have any furry conventions in this state, unfortunately. Which is also part of why we've been trying to fill this gap a bit. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. But then, outside of the state, um, on <laughs> on either side of Nebraska, um, we've gone to Denver in Colorado, and then we've also gone to MFF. Um, in the Chicago area, and both of those are about an eight, nine-hour drive, depending. So, I mean, still a ways away, but still very doable. Definitely. And uh, they're worth it. Oh, yeah. They, mm. They've both been very worth it. Would would recommend both of those conventions. I think one thing that Jacko's question didn't capture explicitly but that is part of our experience here in nebraska is there is you know we haven't had any furry conventions but there are a few different active furry groups and uh before quarantine locked everything down we were getting together for house parties or events with um our local group about once every month or so um and I mean that that was just the ones that we personally were attending to. There was yeah. a lot more meets going on than just that. Yep. So there was you know those weren't conventions by any means. There weren't panels. There wasn't an agenda. There wasn't really any structure. But it was you know twenty thirty people getting together in one place, having a good time, eating food. We have video games and board games set up, standing around chatting. Um. Just really, really nice and, you know, really wholesome parties. Nobody I mean, getting getting wasted or doing anything stupid, but everyone having a lot of fun. As as a point, like, the thing is, is that your general get-togethers are bigger than our first convention, practically. So there's nothing stopping you from getting to where you need to be. Well, <laughs> currently. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a certain something getting in the way. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Um, I mean, aside from COVID, like serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, in the future, it, it would be really awesome to see this um, turn into, yeah, maybe something in person. Definitely. But yeah, I mean, that really just will depend on how things go, I suppose. Just whether the interest is there and everything else. I mean, it... <laughs> It, it has been a lot of work just putting together this convention and a, a, an online or an IRL convention. There is exponentially more things to think about. So, yeah. Make it happen. Make it happen. Exactly Maybe. that. Like, our, uh, that's, it's been our, uh, what's the word? Our motto from the very beginning when uh, South Africa first started was build it and they will come. You've built it. Now make them come. Thank you I for that advice. Like that. <laughs> but first recover, because you're going to be like a bit PTSD after this. Like, trust me on this. Uh, oh, only slightly dead. Yeah. I think Trace might be more dead than I will be. <laughs> I chickened out and went to bed a little early last night. <laughs> it, uh, it has... Hmm. It's... It's a weird combination of being stressed because I'm trying to run on not enough sleep and amazing because I get to be a part of this really cool thing. Mm-hmm. I know your feeling. It's horrifyingly scary sometimes. And it does <laughs> the amount of like, uh, <laughs> it's the tears will come. Don't worry. It's, a, it's this wonderful, <laughs> wonderful cocktail of both uh, cortisol and dopamine running through my body. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, Ooh. thank you, Jessica. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. No, thank you guys for hosting an amazing VCon. Honestly, I've had a ton of fun watching. Thank you so much. And thank to thank you to everyone at Perseverance for all of the support, all of the advice, all of the encouragement, all oh, of the word of mouth that you've given us. You, you should know that this con would not exist if it wasn't for all of you. Just 
if yes. nothing else, just the inspiration that you gave us to, hey, we could do that. <laughs> I, I mean, we, I don't think we would have even thought that something like this was feasible or even that we would have thought of it at all if it wasn't for having your model to go off of. And so thank you all so much for that. Definitely. And then above and beyond that, could you know, <laughs> we would have had something if we had really tried to stake out on our own, but you guys gave us so much of your experiences and so much of your advice after you had done it. And I think our con is dramatically better for everything you fed us. So thank you. Thank you for creating a really good convention. Thank it you. was awesome. This is great. You Thank guys, you for this running is, such an awesome well, convention. Yeah, the but no, no, no. You guys are perfect. <laughs> All the applause. I agree completely. Yeah. Thank you. We really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We have a round of golf claps. We really hope that you've enjoyed um, everything. Oh, thank you, Ivik. Thank you, Ivik. We really <laughs> hope that you all have enjoyed this too, and that this has been a fun experience for you all as well. Um, with that hmm. said, though, I think we do need to wrap things up um, right. because we have another panel coming up, which actually I'm really looking forward to this one. It's um, Alex is going to be designing a creature. Ooh. And. Yeah, is going to be live drawing that, and I think it's going to be really cool. So please stick around. Um, for the folks that are not um, on Free FM, I know that on there, Ivic will be doing live music after this. So I, if you don't want to stick around with us, please go check them out. I, hmm. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick moment to recommend Ivic's uh, podcast. It is, um, he does some really, really, really outstanding interviews with different members of and, the and furry scratch. community. And Can't Scratch. I'm scratch. sorry. <laughs> Ivic and Scratch. Um, they do outstanding interviews with members of the furry community. They talk about some really, really serious and really important questions about identity and um, how the furry community can be more accepting and what's going on in the world in, with respect to those ideas. But they're also engaging and really approachable and very comfy. And then afterwards, Ivic just has a really good radio show. The man has outstanding taste in music. <laughs> hey, if the music wasn't there, right? Um, even if the music wasn't there, <sighs> you and Scratch do a phenomenal job. You do. Oh, you. Thank you. All right. All with right. that, I think we will all say right. goodbye. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, yeah, we really appreciate you all and being thank willing you for to be a part us. of this with us, too. Yeah, thanks for having us, guys. Thanks, guys. Sure. Success. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Uh, See you next right. time. Have Ciao, Bella. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Silver Gato Man, he bought me a coffee. Silver Gato Man, here is the song for thee. He likes to video all the panels at the cons. You should go and watch them, whether they are short or long. Silver Gato Man, you video that's not a jibe. All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe. <laughs>